know we're excited to be in the tournament. And our guys, I think, have the celebration behind them and in fact, there's some serious work today. And uh, we're looking forward to, to heading out to Portland and uh, playing an outstanding basketball team. Talk about Davidson a little bit. The essence of him. Davidson is a second round opponent one time we played Iowa. And they, I thought that was one of the most difficult games that we would face. I think this is one of the most difficult teams that I've faced as a, as a coach in an opening round of a tournament. They, uh, they're a team that early in the year, I just watched the game when they beat Kansas and Kansas City. They're a team that uh, shoots it, shoots the three um, at multiple positions. They, I call the Princeton offense on steroids because they, they do all, all the fundamental things that a great offensive basketball team will do, but they do it at a very fast pace. And they look to run it against anyone. It doesn't matter who they play against. They, they push the pace. What about their individual player for a beat? Anybody stand out? Well, they got two player of the years. Well, one was voted by the media, the other was voted by the coaches. Uh, the, the center was, uh, was voted and gone by the, the media, and Brooks was voted by the, the coaches. So anytime you get two player of the years, you know you have a, But it's not just those two. Those two obviously stick out, but, but they go seven, eight deep, and they all can play. Coach, your reaction to just your seed being on Portland and all that in general? I'm fine with anything. We're I'm just happy to be in the tournament. You know, it's we never thought that we were going to be in Portland. We thought it was going to be Nashville or Columbus because of, we were told that if you're hosting a tournament, you would not play on the same day. Um, so that would be surprised us. But I know you have no way of knowing, but you, you get the feeling that you moved up right, with your performance in the Big East tournament or yeah, everybody right. keeps telling me it would have been better if we lost then we would have gone to Columbus or, or, <laughs> so I don't, uh, you know I'm not sure about that type of rationale but uh, we, we just want to win you know our, our, our fans to go to New York City it's not it's not cheap right. very expensive hotel rooms and flights and we we not only want to win it win it to win a big East championship but we want to win it for our fans and uh, sacrifice and get down there and we had a great turnout, the largest turnout we've had down there. You know, every year we improved by about two or three hundred people and we put about fifteen, sixteen hundred fans, which is great. What was the difference in, in the tournament do you think in the way you ended the season um, not playing your best basketball I Well No, I, I don't we made up our mind that once the tournament was going to come, we were going to play uh, a style that was more conducive for, for, for our players, but we had to get through the season before we could do that. We were not going to be able to do it against South Florida, they wouldn't let you, and we were not going to be able to do it against Syracuse. So we, we were planning this three weeks ago, and um, we played very well in the tournament. Played, we still played very good defense, but we were able to pick up the pace offensively. Even this, the um, Cincinnati game, which was a low-scoring game, the pace was high. Do you like that about the matchup with Davis? I mean, I know they're good, but they score a lot of points, so. It wouldn't be my first pick to play, but um, I do like the fact that they run. But I, would, I, would, I could pick 50 other teams that want to play. <laughs> How would you describe what it meant for the team as far as going from one week to the next, the mindset coming off of the series loss compared to what it is now coming off of winning the Big East Championship? Well, I don't think I've ever. You know, I've had a lot of conference championships uh, that I've been part of, and I don't think I've ever seen a team as excited uh, as that championship. Uh, it, was, it was great to see and witness and be part of. Is Peyton shooting a little floater? He, a lot of times this year he's overdriven. I mean, I think you agree with that. Shooting that little floater, is that something you've had to get him to add to? I think he learned a lot by watching Theodore. We studied Theodore so much. I think he learned a lot. We kept talking about changing pace, changing pace, changing all season long. And he had a difficult time picking that up. And when he watched Theodore on tape a little bit, we kept saying, oh, look at the way he changes his pace, pain. And uh, I think he picked up a lot watching him. Did you literally break down cuts of Theodore, or was it just No, we, just, we, we watched so much. They, these guys watched so much tape, especially this time of year, that we, we kept saying, look at, look at the way he changes his pace all the time. 
you know, part of Peyton's problem is, is he goes just too fast. He can't stop. I mean, he's, he's one of the fastest point guards in the nation. When you go that fast, you don't change your pace. You get off balance, you travel, you, you leave your feet. So he, he did a good job of changing his pace. When you told him you know, not to worry about what people were saying, what was his reaction to you? What, how did he take it? You know, I just, what, what I basically told him is that, that look, you're not having the best of years. I know you're hearing it from all angles. I said, but the, the one thing about your culture today, now, and I told him this, I, I don't subscribe to this culture. It's not the way I live. I said, but you can't live like me. You can't not listen to what anybody says. You cannot have total blinders on, you know, and people say I don't do it, but anybody who knows me knows I, I live this life. Um, you can't be that way because you're going to have friends text you, your family's going to text you, what's wrong, and, and, and this and that, you know, your girlfriend's going to say what's wrong, and, and you know, so you have to understand that that's the bad part about that culture. The good part about that culture is you go down to New York and you have a great tournament, <clears throat> everybody will say, think you're having a great, and everybody thinks right now he's having the greatest season of his life. <laughs> so that's the way your world lives. Not mine, but your world that you're part of. You live that way. You, you're part of it. <laughs> you are. I mean, that's, that's the culture today. It's just the way it is. Did he, did he uh, come out of that even better than you thought? I mean, he really did pick up his play, and it looked like in the term. Yeah, I thought, I thought he, you know, one thing he did. One thing you wouldn't probably think about when you think about Peyton Seaver, and it was a big part of our game, was the way he rebounded the ball. I mean, you don't, you don't expect a... By the way, he shrank an inch at the beginning of the year, he was six feet. How did he go to 5'11"? <laughs> <Right. laughs> they kept announcing him at the guard to 5'11". Did they? Yeah. They had an old roster. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's six foot on our roster. Yeah, sure. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so he did rebound. a great job of rebounding, yeah, and we really needed that. Probably got beat on so much during the year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will the infrared uniforms continue? Uh, I, I think the infrared is here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have, do you have a choice? No. <laughs> the players would kill me if I tried to change. It, is there anything to I mean, they're really liked. Yeah, I mean, the players love it. You know, I'm, I'm sure some fans don't, some fans do. The bottom line with all, it, it, this game is for the players. They absolutely love them. They, they're undefeated in them. It would be mm -hmm. silly to, to change right now. Rick, I think you guys played out there. Your second game as coach here, you played in Portland against Oregon. And is there anything that sticks out? Remember about that trip? Was the building quirky, anything crazy like that? We got our asses kicked. <laughs> Until you just mentioned it, I forgot about being out there. <laughs> How would it, you probably played there a couple times in the NBA, though, anything about the city? I don't think I did. I mean, was it built then? The new place was it built most Did you play it then, though? In Portland? I don't know if the arena No, I don't think. I think it's fairly new, I, I think. I think, it's, I think the arena's probably new. Yeah. But anything about Portland, did you play? It rains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you said a couple weeks ago you were very bullish on this team. How do you feel now going into the term of more bullish? Or? I'm the same way, but we have a very tough opponent. You know, it's. We, we, could, we could win, we could lose, obviously. When you're not, if, if you're anything, from a three seed up, you're going to play somebody very, very good. And that's the thing about college basketball today is, Barry, this is the, the toughest first round game I've, I've had as a basketball coach. And um, they're a very, very good basketball team, extremely well coached basketball team. When you're coming off a tournament championship like that, with that kind of confidence, do you do you boost that up or you dampen it? How do you how do you handle that? I, mean, I think you get on with your next opponent. We we you know like I told them, and we we never got down this year, and we're certainly not going to get high. We just we, we we did our celebrating that night, and I, I told them come back. We're going to take off the next day. Come back Monday, ready to go to work, and uh, certainly celebrate your victory, cherish it. Let's get on, get to work. Late in the season, you said Gordy looked like he may be tired or maybe not as fresh. He had a pretty good performance in the Big East. He did. He played, he, he played well. You know, he played real well. Um, and I thought that I thought that Kyle did a lot of good things uh, outside of scoring that, that he hasn't been doing. So he played well also. Do your seniors kind of have to set the tone here moving to Portland? I think so, but we, we, we need to play Shane Bannon. We need to play... Uh, Wayne Blackshear, and, and we need to play Kevin Ware, you know, so we need to get them going as well. Rick, does the early start time concern you at all? 
I don't, you know, I really pay no attention to any of those things. You know, I don't pay. Uh, it's just one of those years where the West Coast doesn't have many teams. So teams like us, Indiana, and, and so on, uh, I think Davidson's in the same time zone as we are. So they're going to go through the same thing. I, I really don't pay attention to where, times, none of that concerns me. When you made your, your non-conference schedule and you were trying to, you know, call a team you felt would be good in the conference, what does it say about that when you see, I think, six of them won their league tournaments? Well, if it wasn't for three of the teams, uh, like Tennessee, Martin, Philly, Dickinson, and somebody else, we would have had the number one schedule in the nation. Uh, because as good as we scheduled, we also had to study these exempt games where they were, I think there was three, 300. Am I correct on that? I so. Yeah, so that we would have had the number one schedule in the nation. Uh, but as it is, I think we're eighth in the uh, yeah, ninth, ninth, this ninth this morning. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> so we played a very difficult schedule. And you have to research your schedule. You really do. Sometimes the exempt tournaments, you, you have no choice. It's what they can come up with. But we do uh, research our schedule.